Hi, it's Mike again with Ugtastic. I'm on the line here with Andrea Magnorski, who helps run the GameCraft, the Dublin Alt.net, and she also does a podcast called 32 Minutos, uh, which is a Minutos. <laughs> I'm very American here. I, I'll, I will mangle it. But uh, it's a Spanish-language podcast. Hi, Andrea. Thanks for taking the time to sit down. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, oh. It's great to be here talking to you. <laughs> good, good. Now, you're in, you're in Dublin right now? Yeah, we're in Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, Ireland. Okay, I'm in uh, the uh, the the United States, so uh, so we're a few hours separate. It's the afternoon for you. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a, a, a very nice uh, two twenty-five p.m. right now. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah. so uh, let's just jump right in. What what is GameCraft? Okay, GameCraft is a game jam where you have to be there. Uh, the last one uh, lasted twelve hours. Wow. And what a game jam is, is that you start the day with nothing and you end the day with a game. And uh, you can work with a group or without a group. And, uh, you know, there's prizes, you meet new people to make games with and that kind of stuff. Now, like, is, is this like um, games for any platform or is this a yeah. specific? Yeah, the idea is that you get good at prototyping or that you get good at just actually make something. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, uh, use any platform you like. The idea is you come from nothing to finish or, you know, to have a rough prototype in, in that very set time frame. So, like, what kind of what kind of games do people make? Well, uh, it was really funny. We had one, uh, like, uh, two weeks ago, and we had uh, people, uh, you know, we had HTML5 uh, games, well, you know, multiple, you know, multiple uh, MMOs style of games. We had single-player games. We had made uh, games made in Unity with really nice art. And uh, we have games made with uh, Love, you know, it's a, a, a game engine uh, from, from Lua. It's uh, it's really interesting. It, it's really varied. It's from puzzle to, like, MMOs to anything, really. Oh, cool. And uh, you said you had, like, prizes and things like this. So you have, like, corporate sponsors, or how does that work? Yeah, we, we the, the, the gaming industry in Ireland is growing big time. Mm -hmm. And that also means there's companies. Um, uh, some, some of them are well known, like uh, Jolt, Demonwares, Swerve. And, uh, they, you know, we just reached out to them and said, hey, do you want to pay for some food and some prices? And they were like, yeah, this is great because for them, uh, they get to meet people who are interested in making games. Mm -hmm. and, and for us, it's great because it means we can run a really nice event. Right. Yeah. So, so, so this is—is is this something you've done once, or you've done it a few times? Uh, this has gone now twice, and we have what, a slightly different one organized for the 11th of December, and that's uh, one where with just companies, like with just like little uh, indie indie games companies, mm -hmm. that we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna screencast it live, and uh, we're we're gonna put a big donate button, and it's all gonna go to uh, a, a local charity. And the oh. idea is again. You know, game jamming and do it with a kind of Christmas spirit, and you know, do something for Christmas that is not like, oh, I'll just mm. put a hat in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what what made you start this, or or how did you get involved with GameCraft? Well, I have a games company. Oh, okay. Well, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know. Something died there. Um. Um. Bat, yeah. Bat Cat, right? Yeah, I'm I'm the, one of the co-founders of Bad Cat Games. Mm -hmm. uh, we we make we make uh, PC and console games. Maybe some or you know doesn't matter. And uh, and you know we kind of want like you know there's not enough uh, these kinds of events. So I just because I I have experience running events. I just went and talked to hey let's do a game jam, and it got really popular. The, yeah. the first one we had 250 signups. And 150 people turning up on the day because it's a free event. Right. And it was great. The university was the our university was the host, mm -hmm. so we had a full uh, kind of ground floor full of people making games, and it was really exciting. So you had people like sleeping and hacking no. and and. No, it was just eight hours. Oh, it was but, just eight hours. Okay. So they were like particularly at the end. Uh, everybody was going <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah, but They're it was great. They're mainlining the Red Bull, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we had food in the place, so that was that was actually really good. And you know, people kind of commented, and we, you know, we actually made it thinking, okay, you know, we'll just do this. And then, as soon as and the same thing, people said, "When are you doing this again?" So that was February, and we did one now in November. So, 
<laughs> so, so now that you've done a couple of these now, do you have any advice for somebody who's uh, planning on doing a game hacking event? Sure. Um, I, I think the distinction I made uh, on our, our game jam is that you have to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there are some online ones that are great. So if you're doing a presential one, I, I don't know if that's the correct word, like one when you have to be there, at the end, make something so that people talk to each other about their games. Either uh, like a, that everybody has two minutes to present the games to everybody, or that they have to go and talk to each other for some, like some, give them a hook so they have to talk to someone else. Um, then the other thing is actually having food on the place so people don't have to leave and come back. Yeah. It's really helpful. Uh, and water and, you know, the coffee and tea, that kind of stuff. It, yeah. it, it's actually quite cheap to run. Um, and, and prices are a nice addition. You know, yeah. uh, make it comfortable. In offices are really good uh, for for running the events, particularly open open plan offices. So you know, talk to your local people that does these things, and you know, say, hey, can I use your office for a game yeah. jam? Yeah. yeah, some of them will say yes. Yeah, and and for the people that might want to participate in a, in uh, a game hacking event, do you have or any kind of hacking endurance event? Um, do you have any advice for those people that are going to be participants? Yeah, uh, always prepare what, choose your framework before you go. Um, it, it's super handy to be ready and not having to spend an hour. It's like, oh, what would I do? Downloading the framework or setting up, a, if you're going to use a repository, set it up. Make sure, you know, don't count on wireless because there's going to be a lot of people. Maybe yeah. you won't be able to access that. Um, that kind of stuff. If you have a, a bunch of uh, USB sticks, just to, because you're going to be working with people, you might not have network. That might be a good way. Uh, and bring a bottle of water. Okay. Yeah, so stay hydrated. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and you're also involved uh, with uh, the Dublin Alt .net. Um And uh, so what is what is, what is going on with uh, Alt.net in Dublin? Well, um, uh, at the moment, I'm not running uh, the, the organization of the group anymore. Okay. Uh, because I founded it like about three years ago uh, with uh, someone else. Uh, well, we founded uh, Al.net. Uh, the, it follows the principles of Al.net. I'm sure uh, you guys know, yeah. uh, your audience. Uh, uh, basically, it's just alternatives to Microsoft.net technologies. Uh, and we had a really, really nice group, and I thought it was time to leave the community drive itself. Okay, cool. Well, what, what, what drove you to start, start the group? Well, um, I was involved in Ruby Ireland at the start, so mm -hmm. uh, and they, I, I saw the wonderful work they were doing, and I just craved, uh, you know, something that would cover my uh, main language, which is C sharp. So uh, then I, I met uh, Claudio Perona, which uh, he's he's another guy that have helped. He said, "Let's found this," and it's like, yeah. okay. So how how do we do this? It's like well, you put a website, and <laughs> say that you're gonna meet in a pub and take it from there. Yeah. And and you know the first day we had like 15 people, and then you know we kept having meetings, and it kind of stays at that 20, 30 level of people. Mm -hmm. You know, very interested in learning more. Did you use Meetup or were you just word of mouth or how did you communicate? Uh, we use Google Groups and Twitter. Oh, okay. To, yeah. to let people know about the meetings. Yeah, yeah, and you know we, you know the the things like Ireland is relatively small. There's a one and a half million people here, so and developer community is not uh, that big, so we all kind of know each other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's like, hey, you know, there's, there's like beer, uh, when we talk about code, it's great, you know. <laughs> yeah, beer and code is always good. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, I've recently handed off a group myself uh, after a couple of years, and so I, I'm interested in somebody else who's done something like that. When when you handed off your group to another um, organizer, or do, how did you do that? How did you handle handing the group off? With difficulty. With difficulty. <laughs> well, when, when uh, you say difficulty, you mean you didn't want to let it go because you enjoyed no. it, or? No, I, I really wanted to let it go. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much work to do it right, yeah. you know, to actually keep it going, particularly every month, you know. And uh, I, uh, the thing was finding someone that would look after the group with the same level of care. And, uh, you know, that you wouldn't disappoint the community by not being there. 
Um, and I was lucky enough that the guys taking over me um, were working in my office. So I was like, I sent an email to everybody saying, listen, I need to leave. Uh, and yeah. someone needs to take care of this because it's only fair. Yeah. And and I think, you know, maybe what I'm doing is uh, getting uh, tired and boring because two years you probably just keep doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I wanted new blood and new ideas. And uh, now uh, uh, two guys actually took it over and then one of them had to move to Switzerland. So now it's just one guy. Uh -huh. uh, he's doing a great job, uh, Andrew Smith. Well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. It, it's... It's it's very satisfying when you see it handed off. To me, it was and seeing the people that took over it start to schedule meetings and see that yeah. okay, this isn't dead. This isn't <laughs> dead. It's it's yeah. great. Um, yeah. And and, yeah. and uh, the, the last thing is is kind of interesting. Um, so you're in Dublin, Ireland, but you do a a Spanish language podcast. Yeah. Um, what? Um, you don't sound like you have a traditional uh, Irish accent. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was so, born in Argentina. Oh, okay, okay. I so, came to Ireland 10 years ago. Okay, so you do this this, this podcast. What What is 32 minutos, 32 minutes? Uh, 32 minutos or 32 minutos is a podcast about .NET technologies too. And uh, I was interviewed on it a few times, uh, just talking about like... Uh, better practices, CQRS and whatnot. And then, you know, somehow it kind of turned out, it's like, hey, you know, we had you know, like two or three times. Can you, do you want to kind of host the show with us? Oh, really? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure, it's great. <laughs> because every time I was talking, I, I I was struggling with the Spanish, even though I'm a native speaker, <laughs> yeah. because I don't speak it often enough. And I thought, this is a great way to connect with a community that is latent and hungry for knowledge and hopefully I can help. Uh, and also get to practice my Spanish a bit more, you know, and make friends in Spain, and that that's all good things. Yeah. So I, I had to wonder though, if you uh, did you did you learn technology in Spanish or did you uh, learn technology in English? Because I, I have some friends and some colleagues who um, aren't native English speakers, but uh, the bias in in programming is generally English. And uh, when they try to translate stuff back into native language, uh, my wife is Polish, so sometimes when we're having a conversation, she's helping translate for me. Words she doesn't have uh, equal words for them. Was that something that was uh, like a problem? Well, yeah. the things in in Argentina, uh, unlike in Spain, were very pro using the English words. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you know, your networking class is not called redes; it's called networking. Oh. Okay. Uh, so in CAT5, is CAT5, and uh, I disposable is still I disposable, <laughs> like, you know. So, so but it, this is not the same in Spain. So the podcast is about sometimes incredibly funny. Uh, 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 so no, I, and also I left Argentina about 10, over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I never dealt with technology in, like, in depth in Spanish. Uh, I thought, well, I, I, like, it's not a problem for me at all. Uh, and actually... I find it weird in the podcast to when people say, for example, I'm used to say MBC and MBC. So it's like, what? What is MBC? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 are you? Uh, yeah, it's like whenever uh, an acronym gets translated in, like uh, you know, the you know, the USSR, the SSSR, that old. Uh, it, it always struck me as funny, like translating. The Russian acronym into English, and it, it's always uh, just f feels weird. It's like yeah, it totally. Is. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me. I uh, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much, and uh, I'm glad to hear people are doing stuff about user groups. Cool. Anything you need, uh, let me know. I'm Round Crisis and and Twitter. Thank Round you. Crisis on Twitter. <laughs>